Hello and welcome back to another amazing episode of Sports Talk with Dad. A lot to talk about today. But before we get into any of that, as always, my name is Kyle, and I cannot call this Sports Talk with Dad without the man sitting next to me, a man who is proof you do not get better looking with age, my dad, Tim. You've got my genes. Got That's why I'm enjoying to. it now. I'm just enjoying it now. This is my future I get to go to. Hopefully you'll do better than future. that. What did you do? You had gum in your mouth two seconds ago. What about it? Where did it go? I spit it out. No, you didn't. <laughs> the whole swallowing gum thing is a myth. So seven years, you're going to have a little piece No, of no, that's not how it works. That never even made any sense to begin with. Because, like, stomach acid is pretty nasty stuff. Like, it burns up everything. It's not it was, true. It was an old wives' tale told by a very old wife, my mother. Yeah. That and don't go swimming in for an hour. Yeah, don't swallow bubble gum or your fart bubbles. Yeah, I get it. I never heard that. They, I just, they just made that said one it up. was going to last for seven years. Anyways, did you watch the game last night? Yes, I did. Wow. That shouldn't have happened. For those of you that don't know, we're talking about the Miami Heat Boston Celtic game. And remember, we record this on Tuesday. So for us, this happened last night, which was Monday night. Boston didn't even show up on their home court. Tatum got hurt, though. He in got the hurt. first two minutes. It was the first, I think, basically the first play of the game. Yeah. And it was a nasty roll. Yeah. Ball. For those of you that didn't see that part of the game, Jason Tatum goes up for the ball. Somebody's foot gets underneath him. He lands on it wrong, twists his ankle. I mean, it looked like. If it would have been you or I in that situation, we would have snapped our ankle. If it would have been you or I, our bone would have went into it the RK floor. Yeah, the fact that his legs are so muscular and his ankles are so strong it is a testament to the only reason his ankle did not snap in half. And give him huge props because he did come back and he played most of the game. Yeah, but here's a question for you coming into the situation. And I know we want to talk about how great the Heat were, but the game was boring as hell. I mean, it was 100 to, to 82 Boston was never with in the game. six minutes left. Boston was never in the game. No, they weren't. But if you are in that situation and you're Jason Tatum, did he hurt his team by trying to stay in the game? What other choice did he have? He's better Not than stay any, in the game. Is that, he's better than any other alternative they had. Not in that situation. He was, he was not himself hobbling up and down the court. It's the same argument I had for Giannis when he was with the Bucks and trying to play through a back injury. Still is with the Bucks. Sorry, in in game in the, in the first series that Miami won, but it's my same argument with that. It was Giannis helping the team in that situation with his back being as bad as it was? Jason Tatum, yes, he could walk around, but I've I sprained my ankle, probably not ever to that degree, but I remember being on a tennis court and spraining my ankle that bad because I, I slipped. And I, I was not the same player for three days. I had that same injury. I was actually playing softball and rolled it over the second I took my shoe off. It was a third-degree sprain. Yeah. They said the same it'll be situation a, I had in the tennis right, court. Exactly. And they said it would be a month. I was ready to play it the following week because you're young and you heal quickly. Right. Tatum didn't have time. He, I don't know if you'd have been ready for the first couple games of the Denver series. I, I doubt it. He probably would have because he is a young guy and he's in peak athletic condition. But at the same time, that's, again, a testament to his athletic build that his ankle did not snap in half. His, the ball of his ankle touched the ground. It was awful. But the rest of the team did not show up. I don't know if that was because Spolstra just outcoached Boston, which I think was part of it. Jimmy Butler showed up again. Playoff Jimmy. It would. I mean, won the MVP. I don't because know because he's Jimmy sure. Butler. Yes, but Martin could have easily won the MVP of that. Probably series. should have won. But it's a whole playoff award, though. I mean, that's that's how I always look at it. It's not just the Eastern Conference Finals MVP. As much as it should be, it's not. It, it's for the whole playoffs, and the whole playoffs. He's the MVP of that team. Absolutely, but again, Butler got it because it's Jimmy Butler. Well, he's the leader of that team, and he is absolutely the, the only leader. reason they're in that situation. Is now Butler. they are going to Denver with very little rest. How do you feel, by the way, as a Celtic fan? This is the first year 
that it is called the Larry Bird Trophy. Uh huh. And on your home court, it is given away to another player on a different team. Can't feel too, too good. I was surprised. Boston fans are typically pretty rabid. They're quiet. They were quiet and they left early. Most by the time the game ended, there was not many people in the stands. And they shouldn't have been. It, it was done the minute Tatum got hurt. But back to that. The issue with Tatum staying in the game to answer your question is he changed the flow of the game. So you can't say if anybody else would have stepped up. Because him being on that court, he's still the leader of that team. He is still the main option for every shot. And so the ball goes through Tatum. And with him being hobbled and not being able to move off the ball like that, I'm sure he can still shoot better than anybody else, but he was not moving off the ball the same way. And I truly believe he hurt his team staying on the floor. If Butler's hurt like that, if Giannis is hurt like that, if LeBron is hurt like that, if Joker is hurt like that, they all play the game out. Listen, Butler's a different, different animal in that situation because Butler was that team. Mm -hmm. Jason Tatum is not all that team has. They have the deepest bench this year of any other team in the NBA. Well, okay. They had other players that could have stepped up in that situation. Okay, it comes back to my question. It's Bolstra out coach Boston. If you've got that deep a bench, you got to look at Tatum and go, you're done. He 100% out coached him. I mean, don't forget, this is still a new coach. It is. He was there the second half of last year, and then this year was his first full year. He's fresh off the bench still. He's going to be... Bolster's been doing this since LeBron came to Miami. What was it? 13, 14 years now? Maybe Something even 15? Like I mean, he's the best coach in the league. Yeah, hands down. Hands he's the best X's and O's guy. Sure. He was an X's and O's guy when he first started there. That's why Riley loved him so much. Now, though, he has to go up against Denver on a team with very little rest. Yeah. Against a fully rested Denver team that destroyed L.A. Rest can be a detriment to teams. I've said that for a long time, and I truly believe it. Look what happened to the Bucs in the first round. Rest was a detriment to the Bucs. They rested their players. Look what happened to the Colts when they were going to the undefeated season, and they rested for two weeks. Look what happened to the Packers when they decided to rest when they were 15-1. and one. Rest can be a detriment to the team. You don't want to rest too long. So coming in, even though you're beat up, with still coming just off of competition, can be better the 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 Nuggets haven't played in ten days. No, and Miami is Miami's really playing like a team of destiny this year. I mean, they beat the Bucks, they beat the Knicks, and they beat the Celtics. They got nothing to lose. They got they're playing on house money. Denver's got something to lose, especially Jokic, because the reason he didn't get that third MVP and make no mistake, the reason he did not get that MVP for the third time in a row, which he should have is because he doesn't have a championship. Because you would have to put him in the conversation for greatest player of all time with three MVPs in a row, and the NBA does not believe he fits into that category. So who do you think is going to win in this series? Let's get the bold prediction out right now. I don't know. I, I don't know. This hey, is... Uh, we don't play we don't know on this show. No, I, let me think. Oh, God. I really haven't thought about it. This could take forever. Because you have Jokic, who who is the best player in the league, right? Now. He right. really is. With with a team that's proven to be pretty deep, but can have some hiccups. I mean, they showed up against the Lakers, but the Lakers had no reason being there. Miami's a team that, trust me, also has no reason being there. They were the last team to get in. They had to win two games before even entering a series. Well, while you think about it, I'm I'm of two minds. One, I'd like to see Miami win because they beat the Bucs. And sure. it's always nice. Yeah, we lost to the NBA champions. That doesn't make it better. I don't doesn't know why people it. think it but makes it better. People, as many teams as I've seen lose over the history of my life. Whenever the Packers whatever, lost in the playoffs, it whatever, never made me... I wanted I that team to lose. I understand that. Especially if it was the Cowboys. However, Denver's never won anything. This is their first time in the finals in franchise history. and. Which is shocking to me, considering they had Chauncey Billups, Carmelo Anthony. But they had no defense. They played no defense in Denver for the history of the franchise. They were one of the original ABA teams that came in. Yeah, with the Spurs, right? Yeah, it was them, the Spurs, the Nets. Um, 
I think the Kentucky Colonel should have come in, to be honest with you. I think that the Flint Tropics. The Spurs were one in. of those teams, too. The what? The Flint Tropics. Okay, fine. The Will Ferrell movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a great movie. The Spurs were one of the ABA teams that came in. They were. They, they beat the Flint Tropics, too. I don't want it. Go to the NBA. I, think I mean, the Flint Tropics were never going to make it anyway, but it's a good story. Are you through? Yeah. Okay. So, good movie. I think I'm pulling for the heat in this. And just because they are the total underdog. Yeah. I also like Jimmy Butler a lot. I do too. Jimmy Butler is the underdog in the NBA. He's never a- been taken seriously, never been considered a star. He was given up for Tobias Harris twice. Marquette grad. Marquette grad. People blamed him for the, the Timberwolves situation that happened. It shows right now, Jimmy Butler was right about everything he had problems with in Minnesota. He is a Marquette grad. Where did he, where did he grow up? He's not a Wisconsin kid. I know that. I, don't, I do not know where he grew up. But I, I know, know he played Marquette. at Marquette. Wait, I'm going to look this up right now. You, okay, while you're doing that, did you also hear, and we'll talk about this more in a minute, but the Bucks do have a new coach. Adrian Griffin, assistant coach from Toronto. Yeah. Uh, Giannis was part of the interview process completely. If Griffin didn't get past Giannis, he was not going to get the job. From Texas, Houston, Texas. How right. the hell does somebody from Houston, Texas, end up at Marquette? All right, real quick before we get back to the Bucks, who are you taking in in the series? Denver is going to win this one. Okay. I think Denver's got the deeper bench. Spolster is the better coach, but it's going to be they haven't faced somebody like Jokic before. Okay, and so as long as he's on, I, I think Denver's going to win. I'm going to be shooting, cheering, shooting, shooting. Uh, I'm going to be cheering for Jimmy Butler to win this one. I like Bolstra. I like Jimmy Butler. Um, but we'll see. I can tell you, if you ever have questions, is the NBA fixed? Uh, this, this week proved once and for all it is not. Because <laughs> no, they, they had Lakers and Celtics on the line, and Denver and Miami got in. Okay. So we'll come up with a bet and we'll announce what it is next week. But getting back to the Adrian, Adrian Griffin hire, sometimes teams have to protect superstars from themselves. I would think that yeah. would be that was always a Packer argument. You know, we're we're protecting Rodgers from himself. It's the wrong argument. I'm just telling you, at times it needs to be that way. It, For Giannis to be in protecting I, a superstar from themselves means something very different than. We're not going to give them any talent to True. succeed. But the Bucks have the talent. They brought in Giannis yeah. to be part of the interview process. But I, I don't think they... Uh, the Bucks so far have stood pat. They have. They fired Jason Kidd when he had a very good relationship with Jason Kidd. And they fired Bud and he had, a, by all accounts, a good relationship with him. Here's my problem, though. If the Bucks don't make any moves in the offseason... Oh, they're done. I I think that window is closed on the core of the of the Bucks. I think it's already closed. Chris I mean, it closed this year. You let go of the coach. It's time to let go of some players. Chris Middleton has not come back from his injury. No, he has he's, not. He's not going to. You got to remember, Chris Middleton. As much as as much as Milwaukee fans like him, because again, he's an underdog story. You have to remember, this kid started his career in the G League in Detroit, and then was traded to the Bucks for nothing to be in the G League in Milwaukee. And then was called up. And the only reason he was called up in Milwaukee is because we were literally getting rid of all the talent on that team and rebuilding. And they did. And they rebuilt around, for the most part, Giannis and Chris Middleton. They didn't rebuild around Giannis. Giannis got better okay. and Giannis forced them grew, to build around him. Giannis grew into the position. It was a brilliant draft pick. It was. It worked out. But now you've got Drew Holiday, who I think, if you're going to keep somebody... He's the guy I'm keeping. Yeah. You got to keep Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez. He's a defensive player. The problem is, is you don't have a, a one, two guy to run your team. Grace and Allen signing ended up being trash. Pat Connington is exactly what you, what he should be, which is a bent, bench player. He's a guy that comes off the bench. You, you don't have anybody else. Chris Middleton is, is not coming back from that injury. You need to get rid of him. So you need a point guard and you need a shooting guard to come into this team. So Giannis has some protection on the outside. Right. Well, and Chris Middleton, if he's playing his role, should be dropping 
seven, eight, nine threes a game. I mean, that's he a lot does. of threes a game. No, but that's, you look at all the great teams. He should be dropping three or four on a nightly basis. I'd like to see even more than that. You look at guys like. I mean, four is, is what, 12 points? 12 points. You're asking him 12 points from the arc. Yeah. That's not including what he's getting from inside. He all should right. be making some jumpers, too. Sold. I'm just saying four threes in one night okay. is a lot of threes. The Bucks have nobody. When was, I don't remember the last time they actually lit it up and put in nine or ten from three from the whole team. Uh, 2021. There you go. I mean, and that's that's what's killed them against Boston. That's what's killed them against Miami because they just get lit up from that's three. That's what got Giannis hurt. Tried to take over the game. He drove to the basket and he got tripped up and got hurt. But to your point, they've got to get him some help. You've got to give an outside threat so that Giannis can do his thing underneath. He's still going to be the leader of your team, but he needs support. And Connington and Grayson Allen are not the answers. If you can get a Damian Lillard, in here from Toronto, or not Toronto, from Portland, you make that trade. Yeah. Now, I don't know if he's willing to come. He likes Portland. He likes being out there. They let him do his rap thing out there. Milwaukee's not exactly a music city by any means. But if you can get Damian Lillard in for Chris Middleton, a, a package of Chris Middleton, Grayson Allen, uh, Pat Connington. The rest of the bench. Just the rest of the bench. Yeah, just everybody else on the Brian team, but Sanders. Drew Holiday yeah. uh, and Brooke Lopez. Like, you make that trade. It'll be interesting to see what happens. It's going to be a first year coach. I was hoping they would go out and get somebody who's won championships before. No, I didn't want that. I really didn't. I mean, who do you have that's won championships out there? You have Doc Rivers, who's a very overrated coach. Then you have uh, Nick Nurse, who signed with the Sixers. Good signing for the Sixers. Uh, and Doc Rivers, who signed with. The Phoenix Suns. Right. I think it'll be okay. Those are the only two. Do you really think that the two of them would have fit into Milwaukee? Doc Rivers, maybe because he's from here. So he's a Marquette guy, too. Yeah. Maybe. But I don't know. There's a lot of players from Marquette in the NBA. There are, because you also have Crowder. Yeah. Marquette has a good basketball program. They do. Wisconsin. Well, let's move on. Well, they have a football program. They care much more about football. Marquette doesn't have a football team. Correct. You know what the original name of the Marquette Warriors was? The Indians? Nope. I don't know why, but it was the Marquette Hilltoppers. Oh, that's still the high school name. Yeah. Marquette High School? They're still the Hilltoppers. No, the high school is always the Hilltoppers. You got that wrong. The high no, school is the Hilltoppers. No, the college was. Really? Yeah. They're both way Hilltoppers. Back in, way back in the day. I don't, there's no hills in Wisconsin. Except the bluffs. And you don't go on those because there are poisonous snakes on those. Lots of rattlesnakes. Did you hear somebody those. died again last year climbing the bluffs? Well, they're foolish. Yeah, they're out of Devil's Lake, which for those of you that don't know That's is a... Central uh, part of the state. At one time, way back in ancient history, the Wisconsin was part of two plates that came together. The bluffs used to be as big as the Rockies, and over the glaciers, they eroded away. And now it's kind of in that middle part of the state. Thanks for letting me finish my story. Go ahead and finish it. I'm just letting people know geography where the bluffs are. Baraboo, Wisconsin, there's Devil's Lake. Somebody was climbing up on the bluffs from Devil's Lake and got bit by a rattlesnake. Let me tell you, we don't. Apparently, the Baraboo Hospital does have anti venom. Yeah, but, but they didn't find the person in time. You can't get there from Devil's Lake. No. It's, if you're out, Devil's Lake State Park is a little area that didn't really get touched by the glaciers. So it's a lot of right, jagged cliffs. Baraboo did. Baraboo did, but not Devil's, Devil's Lake, Lake did too. But not as that's how the lake formed. I understand that, but it left a lot of jagged bluffs it did. around it. The south southwest side of Wisconsin wasn't touched by No, that wasn't La Crosse and Prairie du Chien and all that. Right. But it kind of carved a path through Baraboo. Yeah. Anyways, in those bluffs, you can't be found if you get bit, if you you're cannot. hiking up in there. You cannot. And that's your geography lesson. For today. Sports Talk Thank with you so much. Today. If you enjoyed the geography lesson, let us know in the comments below and like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy the show it's as much as we geography. enjoy making it frenchy frenchy of the squirrel showed up over here for wow. us today um the nba finals is gonna be great though i'm actually really excited to watch it which i didn't think i would be but the heat really drew me in, in into what's possible in, in the nba because the 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 pendulum's starting to swing back because when lebron formed a super team he really took a lot away from the nba it was you have to form a super team to win Here's my question, though. You and I may want to watch it because of our normal interests. 
But do you think the rest of the country cares? I do, because what you're seeing again, and you saw this with Giannis winning the championship, is that you do not need to form a super team to win a championship. And that's what had become the norm for so long in the NBA. Since the Heat, which was what? 2008, 2009, 2010, I don't know, somewhere in there. Now you're seeing teams with one superstar and a supporting cast that's what you need to win look what the lakers did at the trade deadline they didn't bring in more stars they loaded their bench with supporting staff and that's what got them into the playoffs. well and you're going back to the magics if any there, if there was a super team and people think well there was just one superstar on the celtics of the 80s and the lakers of the 80s no those are two teams were stacked with hall of famers they were but it was built different it was it wasn't, it wasn't friends coming together in the NBA and forming a super team AAU style. It, it was and, built through the draft. Magic and Bird on no planet would have ever played together. Yeah. Charles Barkley wouldn't have played with Michael Jordan. They all wanted to beat the crap out of each other. Right. And then shook hands after the game was done, went and had a drink. But yeah, you went and got time. somebody like a Dennis Rodman to come in and fill out your roster because that's what you needed to win. And he did. And despite what Scottie Pippen said, Michael Jordan did not become great because Scottie Pippen was on that team. So, for anybody who missed it over the weekend, Scottie Pippen once again went after Michael Jordan. He's Ain't being it. real petty. Michael Jordan was an asshole. The the sure. the the uh, what what was it? The Last Dance. Yeah, The Last Dance. Great documentary. We all watched it because it came out at the perfect time. It came out right as the shutdown happened for COVID. So talk about luck. But that comes out, and for whatever reason, whatever reason, Jordan decided we need to show when Scottie Pippen decided to step out of a game because somebody else was taking the last shot. I don't know why that was a part of it. It had nothing to do with the last dance. It had nothing. They didn't have to show it. It had nothing to do with anything. Don't you think deep down, though, those two guys just don't like each other. They clearly don't. They have some respect for each other a little I bit, but clearly I don't know not that anymore. Because uh, I don't blame Scotty for being pissed off at that. Why are you bringing me into this? Why you ask me to interview for this? I do everything, and then this becomes this big thing again when it wasn't talked about anymore. I would be pissed. I would be too. But for him to come out and say, "Well, Jordan wasn't great until I got there," people are rolling their eyes because Michael was. Really good. He got to the Rookie finals. Of the year was an MVP. He didn't get to the finals until Pippen showed up. But no, he got there one of the years against Boston. He got destroyed. No, that was just early in the game, early yeah. in the rounds. And Boston in '86 went on and won. Right. Yeah, he kept getting beat, but he was a scoring machine. He was. He's obviously a great, great player. Right. But that brings me to another question. But you could argue that uh, Horace Grant was the second best player on that team for the first three. You could. And a lot of people would. I just don't get Scotty. I, it was something that I agree with you. I know why he's, why he's upset. I get it too. I completely but, understand but why he's upset. after all this time, we're three years past 2020 in the last dance. Let it go. He can't. And he looks like a bum. I mean, he's, he's, he doesn't look like he's been he's not keeping himself up. No. He's letting his hair get pretty crazy. He hasn't shaved. Like, if you're going to do an interview like that, probably clean yourself up like i get it i like being disheveled every now and then too but if you're going to do an interview that you know is going to go viral well you might, might want to not look like like you haven't showered in five days and he knew those comments were going to go viral of course he did he said it for a reason That's what i'm saying why didn't you take a shower man but here's my question everybody talks about lebron being the goat yeah michael, michael being the goat right one of those two yeah I think a real case can be made and probably should be made at this point that the real GOAT played for Boston in the 80s. And that's Larry Legend. Yeah, I think Larry Bird's up there. He's definitely not one of the greatest of all time. He's one of the greatest of all time. He's not the greatest of all time. Are you sure? Not because he couldn't have been. He, I think he probably was the greatest of all time. You ask any of his peers, and I've watched a lot of interviews, Yeah, they talk right, about what happens if Larry plays today and they're like, oh my God, he dominated. It wouldn't yeah, even trust be close. Me. The issue is, is that with the sports talk with dad YouTube channel, you know, I see the logins and I get to see all the Larry 
legend stuff because you know it's now just a giant part of the algorithm <laughs> on that YouTube page. And so then I get sucked into it. And you send them to me, and I get sucked in, and I'm up until 2 a.m. watching the damn thing. Yeah, you need to go to bed. Why? <laughs> it's healthy for you. You should just go to bed. But the the issue is Larry Larry Bird could have been and probably should have been the greatest player we've ever seen. And, and for many years he was, but the issue is he had two major injuries. One that was hidden, where he broke his hand playing softball right before he got drafted, which did change his shooting. He was a much better shooter in college than he was in the pros. Which boggles the mind because he was an unbelievable shooter yeah. in the pros. I'm not saying anything. I'm just yeah. saying that, that yeah, if, if you look at the stats, it clearly, he's clearly was a better shooter percentage-wise in college than he was in the pros. And then he had the back injury that really shortened his career. I mean, he was hobbling around for the last few years of his career. Biggest rash shocker on the face of the planet. Yes. And he backed it all up. Yeah. When Gary Payton says Larry Bird is the biggest trash talker of all time, you know that yeah, he's a big You know trash he's talker. up there. Is Gary Payton. But it wasn't that he was a trash talker. It's that he said, I'm going to shoot from right there and make it. And then would shoot from right there and or, make it. Or I'm going to dribble right twice, come back to my left and make a three. Right. And he did. Right. Every single time he backed it up. My favorite story still is the one kid who says, yeah, your jump shot. You haven't had jump shots since 84. Next practice, Magic fed him like eight times, yep. eight in a row. For the Olympic team. Yeah. Yeah. And then he looked at the kid and went, looks like 84, doesn't it? <laughs> I just love Larry. I, and I think he should be included in the conversation. Well, and I think he's as big of a competitor as Jordan ever, ever was. Oh, absolutely. And Magic. And Magic. I think he was a bigger competitor than Magic. I'm not sure. Magic and, Magic and Bird pushed each other to such levels. I'm not saying they didn't. And that's why the, that's why the MVP award for the NBA Eastern and Western right. Conference Finals are named after those two guys. Right. Magic say, Johnson's a great player. I'm not taking that away from him. Magic Johnson, especially towards the end of his career, is doing what LeBron's doing now towards the end of his career, yeah, and much more focused on his business. Oh, of course. Well, let's face it. Magic didn't want to retire. Right. Had to with the AIDS. Right. Came back much bigger. He's a much bigger guy in shape than he ever was at the height of his career. Yeah, he had to really focus on making sure he was taking care of his health. I mean, he's cured now. Yeah, and thank God he is. But I don't know. I, I just think when you're talking about all the greatest of all time, and I've said this forever, if I'm going to pick somebody to start a team, I'm picking Magic. Maybe, it, maybe Bird's got to be brought into that conversation because... He definitely does. I would put them... I would put Bird up against Magic or LeBron... Sure. Fair comparison, and Larry might win. I think the best player of the 80s is Larry Bird if you take away the injuries. The issue is, is he got hurt. He got real hurt. At the end of the 80s. Not playing basketball either. Both injuries weren't playing basketball. One was a charity softball game he did for his brother. And the other one was, wasn't he fixing his mom's driveway or something? Something, something crazy. Something with like, the driveway. It's like, Larry, call the guy. Yeah, he wasn't that guy, though. But that's what made Larry so great. He's you know, people have made fun of him and call him the hick from French Lick. No, he was just a small town kid that never lost. As most small small town kids, that's such a part of your DNA. It just never goes away. It doesn't. No, you're you're raised you're raised different out on the farm. Well, you're raised different in small town. Yeah, I mean, you and I both were. Well, let's be honest. If if you're from a small town, you spent time on a farm. Yes, you did. a lot of time on a farm. I spent a lot of time on the farm. And I, I really didn't know any farm kids. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on the farm, but I usually was there for a few minutes and get the hell out before my allergies started to kill me. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, it got to a point where I couldn't smell manure anymore. It was just part of the, part of the air that you breathe. And then I leave for Florida, come back. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this smell. That and the smell of mint where we grew up. There were just massive mint fields That's when you true. get out in the country. And I, it was always there. Anyways. And, and man, you want to smell a fire. That's never smelled better. Wait, wait until the, the mint all lights on fire. <laughs> because some kids in a dry time decide to play with matches. It's almost like setting the marsh in our hometown. It was that fire. whole area. That whole area, kids playing with matches. But that's a story for a different day. We One thing that's interesting that I want your opinion on yep. here is Tom Brady could really play this year. I've marked the tape. Go back 
a couple months, and I said then he was going to play this year. And I said, did you ever think it would be for the Raiders? It was in my, it was Raiders, or in my mind, it was Raiders or San Francisco. San Francisco, I thought was a possibility. I never in a million years imagined the Raiders, but now all of a sudden we're starting to hear rumors that that he could be coming back. For those of you that don't know the story, Tom Brady is now part owner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Everything was approved. Was okay. Everything's been approved or about to be approved. One of the two. Either way, he is or very shortly will be part owner of the Las Vegas Raiders. But Jimmy G's hurt again. And Brady, I didn't. I don't know how. I just learned this this morning. Jimmy G is hurt. But he's hurt again. And Tom Brady is being talked about to come back and play for the Las Vegas Raiders. This year. Like he would have to get the approval of every owner in the league for him to play and be an owner at the same time. Well, and or, that's where if his ownership hasn't been approved yet, it'll be stalled. Yes. Or they'll put it in an escrow or something. They'll hold it for him. He'll get it at some point. But if he can come back and play this year for the Raiders, Tom Brady and Devontae Adams make that deal all day long. Tom Brady didn't have a lot left last year. He really didn't. He He wasn't the same Tom Brady. He didn't have Devontae Adams last year. You're right. He only had two of the best receivers in the league. To be fair, Godwin was hurt a lot. And Devontae Adams is great. Devontae (laughs) Adams is, is up there as one of the great. He is the greatest wide receiver in the game. It's between him and Justin Jefferson. Jefferson's too new. I mean, Devontae is. Okay. Is, you can be too. You can be new. I know. And, and he's Jefferson, still. And Jamar Chase is stepping up. He's at, a Viking. That plate as well. Okay. He's a Viking. He can't be the greatest. Yeah. Leave it alone. He's a Viking. And I still looked up to Randy Moss because of how great he was. And he was great. Like, and make Jeff- no mistake. And Jefferson is great. However, we're talking about the Raiders. And if Tom Brady, I think his mouth is watering to go back and try it for one more year to play with a Devontae Adams. I'm sure. But I don't want to watch. What happened to Favre happened again. I really don't. And that makes me nervous because Tom Brady was not still great. Still one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Don't get me wrong. But he's lost that step and a half. He's he's not the same. He's over he's 45, 46 years old for Christ's sake. I mean, he's not the same player. And I saw Favre when he came back that next year for the Vikings, wasn't really into it, came back because he was kind of pushed into coming back. And he just was not. He was done. He was done. Brady doesn't come back unless he's 100% into it. He can be 100% into it. It doesn't mean as good as he takes care of his body, it doesn't mean his body is into it. Bottom line, end of story. He doesn't have that same zip on the fastball anymore, which is he shouldn't. The fact that he's had it for this long is amazing. But he's going to be, he's going to be what? Isn't he going to be 47 40, years old? 46. I mean, if he wants to break George Blanda's record as the oldest player, I mean, go for it. That's two years away. Or three. However old he is. I mean, either Blanda, way, he's, he's coming into late 40s now. And Blanda played for the Raiders. I, I was watched, a kicker. I watched Blanda. But he also came in in the fourth quarter and won, um, he won half the games the Raiders won one year to get him to the playoffs. Yeah, which is great to play one quarter. I know. Tom Brady's asked to play 17 games now, and plus that he's going to be asked to win a Super Bowl in Vegas. So here's my question. Jimmy G is hurt. Yeah. Brady comes in, plays the first half of the season. Yeah. Garoppolo gets healthy. He plays the middle of the season. Brady comes in the last half, four or five games, right. and gets him to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you're talking Brock Osweiler, Peyton Manning, Denver Broncos. That's yeah. exactly what you're talking about. I could see it happening. It's happened before. <laughs> Osweiler came in and played most of the season. And then... Well, the most famous one, Earl Morrill and Bob Greasy. Yeah, Bob Greasy should never start at that Super Bowl. But that's a different story. Earl Morrill should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Earl Morrill also... Earl Morrill gets it held against him because of what happened in Super Bowl three. But he was a rookie, wasn't he? No. Just he was, in the league. He was a veteran at the time. Oh, but well then, but still, screw him. No. He's he's the reason they had a perfect season. Anyways, getting back to Brady. Yeah, nobody knows that though. Everybody gives Frenchy Bob is getting a lot the, of work today. The credit. Do you think Brady plays? I don't know. I really don't. I think he I mean, he's divorced now. So thank you, Captain Obvious. What else for that does he update. have to do? I think he plays. I don't know. I don't know. I hope whatever he does. I I hope if he comes back, he's going to be 
what he was in 2020 at least. Because I don't want to see... I, I don't... And if I'm a Brady fan, which, which I am, not to the full extent as people I know that were Patriots fans or Buccaneers fans, although the Buccaneers fans don't care about him anymore now they that he's not care. a Buccaneer anymore. Worse, you know, I, were there fans in if, football? If, I've, if I'm a Patriots fan and I've watched Brady my, his whole career and I watched him win and I've been a big fan, I don't want to see him come back and, and see what happened to Favre. Because as a Packer fan and as a Brett Favre fan, it was really hard that last year to watch him. Here's one thing that Brady would, that would drive Brady. He would have a chance to win a Super Bowl with three separate franchises. Yeah. Belichick would have no claim on that conversation. Was it Brady? Was it Belichick? But this isn't what he did with Tampa where he's coming into a significantly weaker NFC. No. This is him going into an AFC West that has the defending Super Bowl champions in the Kansas City Chiefs. You have the uh, LA Chargers. Who should be better this year? You have the Denver, Denver Broncos, Broncos who, who better be better. God knows year. what's going to happen, but you have Sean Payton at the helm now, right. so they're going to be better than they were. I mean, that's still that, on paper a stack division. That's a stack. Let's face it: the AFC is a stack conference compared to the NFC. There's nobody in the NFC. Not right now, which got, gives me hope that Jordan Love may you, do something. You got Rodgers. You've got Allen. You've got Mahomes. On and on and on. Can Brady rise above all of that? He's got to get out of his own division first if he comes back to the Raiders. And that's hard enough. You I, got the Bills. You forgot the Bills, man. Uh, that's true. And forgot uh, Joe Burrow. No, I said Allen. Jay, oh, you forgot Joe Allen. Burrow. You forgot, forgot Joe you Burrow. Forgot football Jesus. I wish. Football Jesus. Okay, fine. It's going to be Listen, tough to get out of the AFC. God's the one that sent down the second coming for football. It's not my fault. Yes, he sent down the best player at LSU ever had. <laughs> remember, he is well, an LSU remember, player. Remember, he, he still counts no, he on does Ohio not State's count. roster for two years. He does not count. I think Brady plays. I just do. I, I thought San Francisco would have been the perfect place for him. Go to a stacked team in your hometown, the team you grew up watching and rooting for, close your career up. That's not happening. The best thing that could happen to San Francisco this year is they start Trey Lance, find out he's trash, lose a lot of games, let uh, Purdy sit for a year. Get healthy. Basically do what happened in Cincinnati, where Joe Burrow, his rookie year, was basically hurt the whole season. They end up getting a top pick and get Jamar Chase. Like Just lose a bunch of games, get a top pick in next year's draft, get a weapon for Brock Purdy as a wide receiver, and then the rest is history. I think the Packers have that in mind this year as well. No, the Packers are going to use their <laughs> first pick on a quarterback next yes, year. Yes, they will. And God help us if it's uh, Gutekunst picking that that pick. It will be. It'll be hey. interesting to see. I'm not looking forward to 2025 with the Packers with a number one overall pick. Only the second one that would be in franchise history. The first. Golden Boy. Golden Boy. Paul Horning, the second overall pick in that draft. Cleveland Browns. Jim Brown. Jim Brown. I think they both they both won. That's probably the best one two pick of all time. Yes. You got five championships for Horning. And then the and greatest Jim running Brown back of, of all time. time. Who, by the way, rest in peace, Jim Brown. You yeah, are just a joy to watch. And you were not only one of the greatest running backs of all time, but also one of the greatest civil rights yeah. activists of all time. So rest in peace. Lived had a good life. Again, it's a celebration of life. He left was- into his eighties. I, I was going to wear my Jim Brown jersey. I have to find it. It's in a box around here somewhere. I ended up with the Jim Brown jersey. I was down in Arkansas. Arkansas? Arkansas. At a thrift store. Of course. And they had a Jim Brown jersey there. And I ended up getting it for like a buck fifty. And it, it's one of my favorite jerseys I have. But it's in a box. I don't wear jerseys anymore. So I, ha- I have to find it. I want to go out and uh, gotta wear that for one of these games. All right. We're shifting gears here. We're... Coming up on the mid part of the baseball season, a couple more weeks to go before that happens. But before we shift into the, any of that, let us know what you think in the comments below. And while you're down there, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as we enjoy making. Let us know whether you think Tom Brady's going to play this year. So let's take a look at the three big rules in Major League Baseball this year. Yeah, yeah. So this came up because I did end up going to a game this past week. Uh, and it was two hours long. It was the shortest baseball game 
I have ever been at. I blinked and the game was over. So for the pitch clock, I would take it. You think it was a good rule. The pitch clock is the greatest rule baseball has put in place uh, since the live ball era. And here me as a purist who did fight against it for a while, best move they could have made. Yeah, the game ended when last year it would have been the fifth inning. You know, the big complaint I've heard was the fact that they're coming back to the games and this, the next inning's already started and they didn't get a chance to finish all their commercials. Major League Baseball, to fix that, charge more for your product right. and have less commercials. Well, you know who's going to hate at the end of the year, the pitch clock? Major League Baseball owners. And I've said it before, but being at that game, I had a chance to literally go out and I got some nachos. Before the game started, I got some souvenirs. And that's really all I had time to go and do during the game. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the pitch clock in the playoffs. That'll be fun to watch. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. It was, a, it was time for them to do this because you had all the batters who were the human rain delays that would right. just step out and pick their gloves, fix their hats, grab their crotch, do all those things. Now they're getting in the box and they're hitting. And that's the way it should be. Right. What you're going to need to see in baseball stadiums, which I love, and I think it's time they brought it back, is you're going to start seeing hot dog vendors coming back again. You're going to see more beer vendors walking around. I mean, you should have a beer vendor in those. They, they barely showed up. I saw a beer vendor once in the entire game in my section. And you need to up those beer vendors quite a bit because when I was younger, when the games were shorter, there were beer vendors every single inning in your section. There was cotton candy vendors every single there was inning. Pepsi or Coke, depending on your market, in every Correct. place. And you know the funny Once thing? Once an inning, they were bugging you about something. Yeah, what well, can I get? Peanuts, Cracker Jack, all of that. Right. I think the owners liked it when they could get people to go to the back to their stands and buy it because they don't have to pay a vendor. Right. Now, people are going to get in their own. Their profit margins are higher, which they're extremely high on they sessions are. already. You don't, you don't have time anymore to wait in line. You don't. No, I mean, you gotta it, get there. Dude, I went and got nachos, and there was no line, mind you. And by the time I got back, an entire half inning was over. All right. So, pitch clock, thumbs way, way up from both of us. Yeah, they, they just need to put a product on the field that's worth watching. We're not talking about that right now. There's nothing to watch. You make the pitchers the stars of the game again, where the games yes. are that short. All of a sudden, I'm going to be not leaving my seat well, to watch that game. Okay, and there's no reason at all when the games are that short that pitcher shouldn't be going into the fifth, sixth. No, you stay warm. Again. You stay warm. You're Fred not. Council. I was at a Brewers game. Fred Council switched out pitchers four times in no a two-hour game. No reason. Four times he switched out. Ridiculous. Pitchers. If they'd use our rules, which they should, he'd be able to do that only at the half inning. Yes. Which would be amazing. He'd still find a way. Uh, he'd find a way. But anyways, the other rules, the balk rule, stupidest rule I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I saw that happen once, and uh, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it. Pitchers are getting smarter about it, though. I will, I will tell you, uh, Corbin Burns got pretty crafty with it, where he faked a balk, and so he counted it, thinking it was an extra one, and, and it wasn't. So... I saw the they're video getting, on that. They're getting crafty with it, which is which is good, but at the same time, it is a stupid rule. Uh, if games are taking two hours. You've got time to throw over three or four times in yeah. the inning. The average is 238 before I went to that game. Seeing how quick that game went when I was there, I have to assume that average is going to be down to about 215 by the end of the year. So you're going to be able to, I just think, you want to see people steal bases, but I want to see the pitchers be able to hold the guy on. Nobody stole a base. In the game, I was there. I saw four home runs. Nobody stole a base. Okay. It, stolen bases are up, though. They're up by a lot. Okay, the other rule... I was disappointed to get stolen base. Yeah. The other rule is the shift rule. And you know my feeling on it. Hitters learn to hit. I don't care if you're shifting over there. If you're yeah. a good hitter... I, I, the other I, I tell you this. Baseball fans that are in favor of the shift rule, the shift still exists. It does. They just all they've done is they brought the fielder in because the rule is you have to have two in the dirt on either side, and you can't have any more in the dirt. So all they did is if they are shifted to the right, they brought in the left fielder to stand just outside of the diamond, move the center fielder over, and move the center and the right fielder over, and so you still have three on that side. And I'll say the same: the shift is still in play. And if you're 
In fact, it's a better shift than what they had before. Probably. If you're that good a hitter, and these are major league professional hitters. Right. Why wouldn't you just spray one to the opposite field? I d- I've been forever. asking that forever. I've Learn how to hit better. You're going to pay millions of dollars. Hit better. Be a better player. And you don't have an issue. All right. So those are the three new rules. I love the pitch clock. It was the best thing they ever did. Yeah, but the issue is, again, go ahead. You finish your thought. I was, pitch clock has been great. Yeah. It will continue to be great. There's yeah. no way the owners can get rid of it now. No. People no. love it too as much. As much as they want to. People love it. Um, the ball and the shift rule. The shift rule may stay for a while, but it's going to go away. And the bulk rule will go away soon. I, I think hope. So. I hope. I, I think it will. I do. Uh, players are definitely getting used to the pitch clock. It doesn't seem to be an issue at all anymore. I think I mean, they like it. If anything, you're going to see intentional uh, clock rules for strikes so they can get an extra second, which is fine. Do your thing. Uh, if you're willing to take a strike like that or a ball, do your thing. The issue I'm seeing is you're still not putting a product on the field. With well, a game going that long, two hours, I'll take my kids back to a game. I think it's great. But you're asking me to pay a lot of money, which you need to lower ticket prices to get people back in the game, which they're never going to do. They're going to raise ticket prices. Watch this. They're going to raise ticket prices double next year to make up for the revenue lost, which is exactly the opposite thing you need to do because it's just not worth it. There's not a product on the field still to watch. I was not entertained by the game going on, and I'm a huge baseball fan, and there was nothing entertaining to watch in that game. By the way, you knew, know who was at that game? No. Your favorite commissioner, Rob Manford, was at that game. Yeah, I'm sure he was. It's probably why it looked so shitty on the field. He was, he was there to basically tell Milwaukee, you don't fix the stadium, your team's going to move. No, there's nothing to watch. They've got to get back to where the pitchers are the dominant force of the of the game. Right. And it's a chess match between the pitcher and the hitter. And the catcher should be the one calling the game, not the pitcher, because pitchers are stupid. It's it's like having a football game where you've made the star of the game the wide receiver. The wide receiver doesn't touch the ball every play. There's a reason the quarterback is the star. Everything revolves around the quarterback. And the receivers are great. Just, Justin Jefferson is, is great to watch. But if Kirk Cousins is garbage and can't get him the ball, then we don't ever hear of Justin Jefferson ever again. It's the same thing in baseball. You're, you've made the star, or the quote-unquote person you want to be the star, a person that's a part of the game for 10 minutes. The yeah. only time somebody has been a star when they've only been ten mi- a part of something for 10 minutes is Jack Nicholson and a few good men. There's never in, in the history of the world ever been a person who has been the star when they're only a part of it for 10 minutes. That may be the weirdest analogy you've ever come up with. I'm not saying it's wrong. Just pop. Where did you, you pulled that out? I don't know. I'm proud of it though. It's a good one. I'm very proud of it. But I'm just saying you, you, you have no time in history. Has somebody that's been a part of something for 10 minutes ever been the star of the game? Pitchers are the star of the game because they touch the ball. Always. If you look throughout history, the stars of the game are Bob Gibson. They are Johnny Bob ben. Feller. No, it's the catchers. They are. Really. It is not. It is Randy Johnson. It is Roger Clemens. It is the pitchers that have always truly been the star of the game. You buy tickets to watch the pitchers. When I was a kid, it was harder to find tickets when Kerry Wood was on the mound than it was to find the fifth starter because you watched Kerry Wood pitch because it was magic. And when do you want? When do people want to go and see show? Hey, on Otani, they don't. No, they do. But when do they really want to see him? When he's on the mound. When he's on the mound. When he's on the mound, because he could hit as well. Because he was hitting in Milwaukee. Yeah. But people were really disappointed because he wasn't pitching. Right. They want to see him pitch, which is proof right there. Exactly. Because why? Because you see him for the entire game, and you see. Him doing something that nobody else has done for a hundred years. So I mean, Babe I Ruth never it. actually did Would that. Would you stop it? He did. The one Babe he Ruth pitched when he was with Boston before he was really a hitter. Greatest player of all time. He didn't hit even stop twenty it. home runs until he was a full time hitter. And two, he pitched in the dead ball era, which none of that counts. 
Stop it. None greatest, of it. Greatest player of There's all time. Different statistics. He they threw the ball harder count. than count. They do count. They count in their own separate category. No. Dead ball era stats and live ball era stats are not the same. There's a reason Cy Young does not count. You don't count his wins because he was bouncing the damn ball off the ground and home runs. There were no fences. You're playing on farms. I am. I will say I, the only thing I agree with is that instead of the Cy Young, it should be the Walter Spahn or Warren Walter Spahn. Spahn. Warren Spahn you know award. I'm, either Walter Johnson or, or yeah, the both. They just went this way. Yeah, that works. The Warren Spahn award. Well, you can make the Cy Young for AL and NL. I mean, it could be Warren Spahn and Walter Johnson. Award. No, it should be Cy Young in the AL and Warren Spahn in the NL. Or just don't count a dead ball or a pitcher. Again, Babe Ruth, greatest player of all time. No. Otani's doing something they haven't He's seen, not. seen since then. Stop it. He's one of the, but the, this whole he idea is. that Babe Ruth was a pitcher and a hitter at the same time, that, that load of crap you fed me my entire life. I never said he did it at the same time. You never. Everybody ever. does. No, he, he still has World Series record he that does. stands today during the dead ball era. I Get off care. your high he horse. He still had the pitch. You know how disappointed I was when I realized that he was a dead ball era pitcher and never pitched during the live ball era? Just, it was like you took away the Easter Bunny from me. How dare you? Anyways, one more topic I want to get to today. Are you excited to see two movies? The Flash and the new Indiana Jones and the Stone of Destiny? Or Dial of Destiny. Dial of Destiny. Um, so Indiana Jones, I'm going to take my son to for sure. I'm very excited to see that one. I, have I love Indiana Jones. Uh, it, it's an every other movie thing. This looks like... The odds are great. The evens are terrible. The the trailer look... That's not true because Le Legend... Or the one with um, Sean Connery was the best of all. It was the third. The third movie. Odds are great. Oh, okay. Evens I, are I, terrible. I heard flip. Never mind. Anyway. Was Crystal Skull... Odds, that was five. That was four. It was four? Okay. It was the one after the third, which is the fourth. This is the fifth. Okay. Anyways, getting back to this movie, they brought back the Nazis, and they've got a great villain. Yeah, the, the trailer, villain is great. The trailer looks amazing. What's his name again? I can't remember his name, but he's been he's been he was the vil, villain in Casino, Casino Royale. Royale. He's the new uh, Blake Grindelwald, uh, which he should yeah. have from the word go. I mean, I don't understand why. He, listen, I like Johnny Depp as an actor. I. I, I, didn't, guy is, I don't know why he was ever cast. This guy should have been Grindelwald from the word go, but whatever. And and now he's the villain in this movie. He's a great actor. Oh, he was also uh, Hannibal uh, Lecter in the TV show, which that was... I had to stop watching that. That was too much for me. I never watched it. Yeah, it's too gory. I don't like gore a, for no he's reason. He's a great, great actor. He is, and I think he'll be a great villain in this. They are bringing back the Nazis, which will be interesting. The Dial of Destiny. They did break one rule, though, that could make the movie bad. Every odd movie has had a religious component to it. The Dial of Destiny is not a religious component at all. I've I think they just made this up. It's also something that they made up. Yeah, it's not like the Ark. And by the way, even the fourth movie was based off of legend. Is the Dial of Destiny real? Sort of Destiny was. But that's a different thing. Sword of Destiny was the sword that pierced Christ on the cross. Yeah. By the way, his it also name wasn't is, a sword, by the way. It was more of a spear. But. Mads Mickelson is the guy's name. Well, whatever his or name is, he's great. Uh, Dial of Destiny. Real. I don't think it's real. Uh, real artifact. Dial of Destiny will appear in Indiana Jones, a fictionalized version of. The anti kythera mechanism. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a mechanism they found in the Mediterranean that they still can't figure out Which what is associated it's with Archimedes. It was probably from the lost civilization 12,000 years ago with, that they haven't figured out yet. Or the aliens. Hmm. Nice. I didn't know that's what they based it on. I'm, I can't wait to see it. It's, I love Indiana Jones. Crystal Skull was one of the worst movies of all time. It's like Rocky Five. Just forget it was ever made. Yeah, for sure. They tried. They tried. I like Shia LaBeouf as an actor. Did he too. didn't fit into that. No. Um, it just didn't work. It didn't work at all. It was very. It was. It was very lazy script. It really was. It was very very lazy. This one actually looks good. 
It does. I'm excited for it. It should be good. It, it's Harrison Ford looks like Indiana Jones again, which is exciting. Um, He's 104 years old. He is, but hey, if there's a 104 year old that can kick my ass, it is. It is probably Harrison Ford. And then the Flash movie. Yeah. You're not excited? No. It the trailer looks interesting. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of Ezra Miller. I mean, he's a crazy person, but... I, I don't know why they didn't do Grant Gustin, the guy who plays Flash on the Yeah, TV but series. I mean, he was... Ezra Miller was great. He, he was the only shining moment of the Justice League movie. I mean, he was great comic relief. I, I've liked Ezra Miller as an actor in a lot of things. I really have. And I still like him as an actor, even though he's insane. He's fallen off the deep end, man. Poor guy. I hope he gets the help he needs, but I he is... Too. I mean, Michael... I mean, he kidnapped people. I mean, he, he really should be in jail for a while. <laughs> Michael Keaton's in this one. Yeah. With the old Batmobile, the second greatest Batmobile of all time. Which is great. First, of course, was this Batman 66. Yes, but that Batmobile. was the Batmobile of my childhood, and, and I'm starting to lean more and more towards that being better. But nope. um, it's like the whole Babe Ruth thing. You just lied to me about what was good. I did not and, lie. Uh, I'm starting to realize Never lied. Really better things in life. Anyways. But I'm a huge Batman fan. Right, as you can tell, I have Batman right back here. My looks son's like name the, is Grayson. Looks like the Ben Affleck Batman. It it's not. His his is the his outfit. Dark Knight Returns. I know that's it, not the Dark Knight Returns Batman. That's the new Fifty Two Batman. Anyways, Ben Affleck is also in this. I'm I'm a nerd when it comes to this stuff, and Flashpoint is one of my all time favorite storylines in all of DC Comics. And they've already, in the previews, ruined part of this storyline. And I'm very upset about it. I don't. I'm excited to see Michael Keaton as Batman. I am. But Bruce Wayne was not in Flashpoint. He, that was Thomas Wayne. And he wasn't yellow. He was red. And yellow. he used oh. guns. And was very, Wait, very violent. Back up. Thomas Wayne. Bruce Wayne's dad. Yeah. So he was Bruce, yellow? No, he was red. He was what does that mean? So instead of the bat symbol with the yellow around it, it was yeah. the bat symbol with red around it. Thomas he Wayne was over Batman. In Flashpoint he was. In Flashpoint is Thomas Wayne. So in Flashpoint, when Flash screws up the past right. trying to save his mom, uh he 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 messed up the all the what am I trying to say here? When he goes back in time he changes the fact that Thomas and Martha were not killed. It was Martha and Bruce that were murdered by Joe Chill. And Thomas survived. And Thomas became Batman. But was a very much darker version. Sure, because he was an adult. Right. And right. he was on a vendetta. Correct. Thomas Wayne was also Owlman in Earth 3. That's a different story, but Flashpoint Batman is is not this. This is not Flashpoint Batman, and it bugs me. Well, I want to see it because I'll even... watch it, but I'll be just as disappointed as I've been with every single DC movie since The Dark Knight. I'm not. I'm not excited to see it. Uh, I have no interest. I probably won't go see it in theaters. Honestly, I'm gonna see both of these. In I have no desire to see it in theaters. Uh, I just wish they go to the Bat Family. Nobody cares about the other characters. <laughs> well, you want to bring Man Bat and no. Nightwing? I think Bat they could Girl. do a Nightwing movie. I think they could do a, a, a Red Hood movie. I think that'd be great. They had a Batgirl movie and scrapped it, which I don't know why. Uh, I think Nightwing would be a great movie. Nightwing would be a great movie. Because Dick Grayson... You could do a Bat whole Adam. Bat Family movie because there's been several instances in comics where Batman disappears and all of a sudden you have Nightwing, Red Hood, Batgirl, and uh, Red Robin, who's Tim Drake, and then you could even bring in Damian Wayne. You asked me about Flashpoint. This is not a squirrel moment. You asked me what I thought about Flashpoint, and I think you could do some great things. Am I a nerd deep down? 110%. There's way more saying, information that I needed to know They about are going that. to ruin this movie. The preview... If, if, if that pre A preview is to make the movie look as good as it possibly can, right? So if that's the best that you have to give is that preview, I'm not excited to see a movie. Okay. 
I'm just not. You've you've already wrecked me. I'm excited to see it. That's good. And I'm also excited to see Indiana Jones. I'm excited to see Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones more so than Flash. I'm excited to see Indiana Jones. The new Spider-Man is coming out this summer, which I'm very excited to see. Why? Because Grayson loves the first one, and it's okay. a superhero movie I get to enjoy with my son. Okay. That and, so, and they did it really well, the first one, so I'm excited to see what they do with the second one. Uh, but that has more to do with my son who's really excited to go and see it with me in theaters. So that's more of that. But he's becoming more... That's what annoys me. My son is becoming more of a Spider-Man fan than a Batman fan because they can't figure out how to do Batman right. Have him watch Batman 66? No, I've had him watch Batman the Animated Series, which he likes, but oh. that's dad's story. That's from dad's time, so it's not as cool. So they well, need to update it. Welcome to daddom, where the kids can't watch anything you really love because right. you're not cool enough. Right. He won't even watch Batman Beyond, which also would be another great movie, by the way. Yeah. Batman Beyond is a great story. They could also do Batman Beyond. They should do that one. That would be interesting. You don't even know what Batman Beyond is. Batman Beyond is when Bruce Wayne is the old guy and they bring in the new yeah, kid. But yeah, you I... only know that because of me. No, so... it's not. I actually watched it. Mm, of course you did. It was on the CW. Yeah. When, when the CW was good. I actually watched it. Uh, way to ruin it for me. Sorry. <laughs> I rest my case. But... You and I have had a really good time. But as always, you cannot have a conversation with your dad without your dad getting the last word. So it is all you. So things happen in life. Some good, some bad. What happens, though, is in the end is how you react to it. So things happen this week. Not so good for me. But it's going to be fine. Things are going to turn around. And we're going to... Get past it and move on. If you sit and dwell on the negative parts of life, like the price of gas 24-7, even though it's way too high, but if you deal with just the negatives all the time, life's going to get to be really, really boring and really, really negative, and I just refuse to live that way. So if something happens, dig deep inside, find your faith, find something that will get you through that bad time of your life. And know that it's going to get better. There's life after whatever you're into. I've been through it more times than I care to count. There's always life afterwards. And it's a better life afterwards. Because you learn from what happened and you move on. So take that as a, from somebody who's had a very bad seven days. But we're on the other side of that at this point, And things are going to be a lot better. As I've come to learn through you and something you're really good at is remembering life things in life don't happen for a reason you have to make them happen for a reason you have to keep moving forward Absolutely. and you are very good at that and i'm proud of you for for everything and and glad to call you my dad well thank you you ripped me for the last hour long the show was today yeah well you're still old <laughs> uh you're still looking worse and worse every day as you age your 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 skin's starting to sag now um just remember you have my genes i'm I'm, I'm I'm better than you at a lot of things. You're not better at me point. than anything. Yeah, so. at this point, maybe, maybe <laughs> you might even be able. To... Listen, it's not my fault. You quit playing tennis before you I had a actually, chance to beat you. You might actually be able to beat me at tennis. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't count anymore, though. Thank you so much, as always, for watching this. Been sports talk with Dad. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.